within religious traditions, including Christianity, the belief in the devil is deeply ingrained. The devil is commonly perceived as a powerful supernatural being associated with malevolence and temptation, is the adversary to God and humanity, symbolizing the embodiment of wickedness and a force that seeks to lead individuals astray. This malevolent figure serves as a counterpoint to the divine and represents the antithesis of righteousness and virtuous living. One prominent example is the story of Adam and Eve, where the devil appears as a cunning serpent, tempting Eve to disobey God's commandment and eat from the tree of knowledge. This act represents the introduction of temptation and the human capacity for choice. The devil's role in this narrative serves as a symbolic representation of the ego's influence on our decisions and actions. The ego and the devil are synonymous because, like the devil, the ego is always a trap. And like the ego, the evil spirit is all about self-preservation. It moves us from a trajectory toward God and neighbor to a path that curves back onto ourselves. In Christianity, the devil is often described as a malevolent entity, representing evil, temptation, and the forces that oppose God's divine plan. Similarly, the ego can be seen as a powerful force within us that seeks to gratify selfish desires, promote separation, and lead us away from our spiritual essence. Both the devil and the ego thrive on creating a sense of separation and individuality. They fuel a distorted perception of reality, reinforcing the illusion that we are disconnected from one another and from our divine source. This separation allows the ego to exert control and influence over our thoughts, emotions, and actions. Like a chameleon donning various masks, the ego becomes entangled in the web of identities. It clings to labels, roles, and possessions as if they define our essence. It craves recognition, validation, and superiority, yearning to stand apart from the tapestry of interconnectedness. The ego's attachment to identity perpetuates a cycle of division and conflict. It breeds a sense of us versus them, drawing lines of separation where there should be unity. It fuels the flames of competition, envy, and greed, obscuring the underlying truth that we are all part of the same cosmic fabric. In this dance of egos, conflicts arise, personal conflicts, social conflicts, and even conflicts on a global scale. The ego's quest for dominance and self-preservation blinds us to the underlying interdependence that permeates our existence. It erects walls where bridges should be built, stifling understanding and compassion. The ego, like a tempestuous storm, thrives on attachment. It clings to desires and fears, keeping us locked in a cycle of seeking external validation and avoiding perceived threats. It becomes a constant companion whispering stories of lack, unworthiness, and the need to guard our individuality at all costs. But just as God defeated Satan, we can tame our egos by freeing ourselves from the limitations it imposes on us. The key to overcoming the ego lies in the power of consciousness, in awakening to the truth that the reality is we we are not disconnected from one another, we are not separate entities, but rather expressions of the same divine essence. When we recognize that we are all interconnected, that the same universal consciousness flows through each and every one of us, a profound shift occurs. This shift in awareness brings forth the understanding that we are all manifestations of God, that the divine spark resides within each of us. We are not merely our physical bodies or our thoughts. We are the embodiment of consciousness itself. We are God experiencing itself through the multitude of human perspectives. We are the shimmering drops in the vast ocean, distinct yet inseparable, merging and flowing with the tides of eternity. Just as each breath unites us with the ever-present rhythm of the universe, our hearts beat as one, resonating with the symphony of life. By cultivating a heightened sense of consciousness, we can begin to recognize the ego's influence in our lives. We become aware of its cunning tactics, its attempts to separate us from our true essence, and its relentless pursuit of self-centered desires. It is in this realization that we find profound peace and acceptance 
and where there is peace and acceptance, we find our heaven. If we accept the idea that we are all God, there will no longer be any ego controlling us. Because there is ego consciousness, which identifies totally with one's body form and its needs, only when God consciousness is absent. From the only presence of ego consciousness are associated the most negative human qualities such as anger, hate, selfishness, and arrogance. Heaven, often envisioned as a realm of eternal bliss and divine harmony, is not confined to some distant afterlife. It is not a reward awaiting us in the distant future. Instead, it resides within the fabric of the present moment, within the depths of our consciousness. Heaven is found in the exquisite dance of awareness, where we awaken to the truth that we are connected to something greater than ourselves. It is the recognition that we are not separate from the divine, but an integral part of it. In each breath, each heartbeat, we touch the divine essence within us. When we are fully present, when our consciousness expands to embrace the present moment, heaven reveals itself. It is a state of being where the illusions of ego dissolve, and we glimpse the eternal beauty that permeates all of creation. We become aware of the interconnectedness of all things, and a deep sense of peace and serenity envelops our being. Conversely, when our thoughts and emotions are dictated by the ego, when we are trapped in the relentless chatter of the mind, we find ourselves in a state akin to hell. It is a self-imposed prison, where suffering reigns and the divine essence is obscured. In the stillness of the present moment, we find liberation from the torment of egoic attachments. As we surrender to the flow of life, as we ally ourselves with the divine will that permeates all existence, heaven reveals itself in the tapestry of our daily experiences. We see glimpses of divinity in the laughter of a child, the gentle touch of a loved one, and the awe-inspiring beauty of nature. Now, to experience the state of consciousness where heaven reveals itself within, engage in mindfulness practices such as meditation, deep breathing, or simply immersing yourself in the beauty of the present moment. Observe your thoughts without judgment. Question the stories and narratives created by the ego. Reflect upon the deeper truths that lie beyond the surface-level identifications. By examining the illusions of the ego and seeking to uncover your true self, you can begin to dissolve the barriers that separate you from experiencing your divine nature. Now, I would like to invite you to share your thoughts and experiences related to this topic. If anyone disagrees with what I have said or feels disrespected, please know that I have expressed everything with good intentions aiming to stimulate curiosity in each of you. I have shared all of this with love and a deep desire for sharing my knowledge.